Hey friends, it's Laurie. Today I made four Christmas DIYs. I hope you enjoy them, so let's get busy. I'm starting by using one of these fluffy dust mops from the Dollar Tree. To remove the handle, I just twisted it off the end. With that complete, I'm placing it aside to make Santa's boots. I'm using one of these cute little boot ornaments that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I'm removing the little pom-pom accents and I'm going to hang on to those because sometime in the future I'll probably end up using them. Now using my scissors, I'm going to carefully remove the white faux fur from the top of each boot. I'm not going to be using the bottom part, so if you have to sacrifice a bit of that, not to worry. I removed the bottom and the glue that held on the top, it came off pretty easily. When I was done, I then followed the same instructions for the second boot. Each of the boots have a seam, so I'm using a light grit sandpaper and lightly sanding them down. I wiped off the sanded residue and now using my black acrylic paint, I'm giving them each a coat. Now that they're dry, I'm going to attach the faux fur rings back on the top. I placed it back over the boot and then used my glue gun to attach it in place. After the first boot was complete, I followed the same instructions for the second. When you're adding it back on, don't worry if it's not perfect because honestly, you're not even going to see most of it. With both of them complete, I'm adding some hot glue to the top front to attach them together. On the opposite end of the dust mop, from where I removed the handle, there is a small capped end. To attach the duster, I'm adding some hot glue in the center of the boots, between the fur and placing the end down to meet the bottom fur on the boots. To give my Santa some weight so he can stand on his own, I'm using some of these glass beads that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I pushed as many as I could down into his boots and you can always use anything you have on hand. Now that he's balanced and stands on his own, I'm removing the top metal piece that attached the handle. To give my Santa just a bit more support, I'm using two of the six inch wooden dowels that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. To help them blend into Santa's beard, I gave each of them a coat of white acrylic paint. To attach them, I'm placing one in the back of each of Santa's boots and making sure that they touch the bottom. I'm then adding some hot glue between the dowel and the boot to hold them in place. I'm now pulling away the beard and adding a dot of hot glue to the dowel and then I'm hiding it back into the beard. When I was done, I then followed the same instructions for the other side. I'm popping in to share that today I'm participating in my monthly friend collab group and it's being hosted by my sweet friend Liana from Liana DIY. Our guest hosts for this month are Stephanie from Mama Can Make It and Chantal from Crafty Hints. All of these women have amazing channels and you can check them out along with my other crafty friends by clicking on the Christmas collab playlist I'll have that linked below in my description. If you're new to my channel, please consider clicking on the little red subscribe button below, leaving me a thumbs up, and to all my returning friends, you know I'm always so happy to see you. To add on Santa's hat and his arms, I'm using one of the red sparkly Christmas tree skirts that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. To make Santa's hat, I'm giving myself enough room on the side of the skirt placing the top at the top of his head, and then wrapping it around. I'm making sure I have enough fabric to cover his head, and I'm basically cutting the skirt in half. Before I add it, I need to make his nose, so I'm using one of these table tennis balls from the Dollar Tree. 
I'm painting mine with some coral acrylic paint and to make it easier to paint, I'm placing one of the Dollar Tree wooden skewers into the side of the ball. Once it's dry, because it is paint on plastic, it can scrape off, so I'm giving mine a coat of Mod Podge to help protect the finish. When it was dry, I added some hot glue to the center of the beard, five inches up from the bottom of the boots. I then pushed Santa's nose in place. I have my Santa upside down, so you can see where I'm placing some hot glue on the top of his nose. To attach his hat, I'm first centering the fabric and placing the white end of the fur on his nose. I now folded down the top, added some hot glue, and then attached that to the top of the head. I'm now gathering the fabric in my hands and I'm bending the top slightly to the side. I'll be using one of these Dollar Tree dust cloths, but first I'm turning Santa over and I'm using it to protect his nose. I'm adding some hot glue along the top edge of the faux fur and I'm folding it in half. And now I'm doing the same for the other side. I'm attaching some hot glue to the back of Santa's head and then attaching my first folded side. I'm going to make an almost point at the top of Santa's hat. I folded it over and then hot glued it to the other side of Santa's hat. I'm now adding hot glue as I'm working my way down and I'm pulling one side of the hat tightly onto the other but not too tightly. You want to make sure that the front of Santa's face isn't constricted by how tight the hat is. And if you're not sure, before you glue it together, just kind of play with it so you're comfortable when you glue it. And as you can see, I also used my finger protector just to help prevent getting burned. To make Santa's arms, I'm using the other side of the tree skirt. I'm turning it over and folding one side about an inch worth of fabric. Now using my glue gun, I'm attaching the folded piece to the other side. I'm now adding on some more hot glue and folding my fabric onto that. I'm now giving myself about a half an inch edge and cutting it free from the tree skirt. I'm adding a line of hot glue down the middle of the arm and folding the edge of my fabric onto it. With this one complete, I follow the same instructions and make my second arm. I used my scissors and I cut off those pointy ends. To attach them onto my Santa, I placed some hot glue on the top part of the arm and then tucked it up under the side of Santa's hat. I attached Santa's right arm the same way, but I let it hang just a bit lower than his left. My Santa is going to be holding a little gift box and I'm using one of the gold presents from the Dollar Tree. I used some hot glue to attach the gift to his arm and to his beard. You can always leave his hat as is, but for me, I wanted to make it a bit fluffier, so I'm using that Dollar Tree dusting mop pad. There are seam lines in the back, and I'm going to cut along two of those, one completely and one halfway. One piece won't wrap completely around Santa's hat, so I'm going to end up using a piece and a half. Attaching them is super easy. I added some hot glue onto the white of Santa's hat and then I centered and placed down the white fur. I added some hot glue onto the sides and the back and then I attached my second piece. To accent Santa's hat, I'm using a piece of holly on a red ribbon and this came off a Dollar Tree pick, but you can use any type of holly that you like. To attach it, I placed a dot of hot glue onto his hat and then just placed down the holly. To finish off Santa's hat, I'm using a white pom-pom that I already had on hand, but if you don't have any, a cotton ball will do the trick. Then I simply attached it in place with some hot glue. I was looking at Santa's boots and they looked a bit dull to me, so I ended up giving both of them a coat of my Mod Podge. When they were dry, they were nice and shiny, and now this Santa is ready for the holidays.
To make my ribbon Christmas tree, I'm using one of the green trees from the Dollar Tree. It does come with three pieces you can use as a stand, but I don't need them for this project. There's not a whole lot to them, so I gently spread out the limbs. I'm going to give them each a bit of a snowy accent, so I'm using some of my white acrylic paint. I placed some on the end of my paintbrush and began to add it on randomly here and there. If you add a little bit too much in one spot, just kind of move it around and honestly, once the tree's all put together, you won't even notice. Once I had the front complete, I then turned it over and did the same on the back. While that's drying, I'm going to be cutting the ribbons for my tree. I'm using some of this one and a half inch wired Merry Christmas ribbon from the Dollar Tree, a piece of Christmas stripe, poinsettia and sheer red ribbon, five eighths inch from the Dollar Tree. These next ribbons I had on hand, a one inch white sheer ribbon, along with a one inch Christmas plaid ribbon. I'm using two wired ribbons, both one and a half inches, one is a sparkly silver and the other is a red and white polka dot. And to finish up, I'm using this one half inch silver trim. I'm cutting all the ribbon and trim two pieces at 12 inches and two pieces at 14 inches. For the red and white polka dot, I cut two 14 inch pieces and three 12 inch pieces. What I love about this project is you can use different styles and different sizes of ribbon. I'm cutting the Christmas striped ribbon two at 12 inches and I'm only using one of the red sheer ribbon and I'm cutting that at 12 inches as well. For the poinsettia, I'm using one 12 and two 14 inch pieces. I'll list the ribbon and the sizes that I used below in my description. Now that I have them all cut, I'm going to dovetail the ends and this is super easy. You just fold the ribbon in half and then cut away both ends at an angle. I did this for all my ribbons with the exception of the silver trim. I just left those ends straight. These are the selection of 12 inch ribbons that I'm using on my tree. I pushed the branches up to move them out of the way. I'm starting with the poinsettia ribbon. I'm making sure the two ends are even and then I'm tying it in a knot around the base. I'm sliding it down to the bottom and now adding on the white sheer ribbon. I'm once again making sure the ends match and then tying it into a knot. Now, if you're not perfect with your ends, not to worry because once the tree's together, you won't even notice. I'm adding on the silver trim and I'm making sure to push the ribbons down so there's room for the next ribbon. I'm now adding on my red and white polka dot and I'm finishing up with the Dollar Tree Merry Christmas ribbon. With these in place, I'm now separating the next section of branches to add my ribbons. These ribbons are 14 inch ribbons and I'm starting with the red and green plaid. I'm adding on the white sheer ribbon and once again, I'm just making a knot and tying them on the tree. I'm now adding the poinsettia, silver, making sure to push them down as I go the red and white polka dot. I'm now attaching the silver trim. And when I'm done, I'm going to finish up by adding on the Merry Christmas Dollar Tree ribbon. It's time to add on my next set of ribbons. So once again, I'm separating the next group of branches. These are 14 inch ribbons that I'm using for this section and I'm starting off with my poinsettia. I'm now adding on the silver trim and then the red and white polka dot. I'm 
I'm following that with the silver ribbon and the red and green plaid. The next ribbon I'm adding on is the Christmas stripe ribbon. Now I only had enough to cut two 12 inch ribbons so I'm just adding one of them on here. And now I'm finishing up with that Dollar Tree Merry Christmas ribbon. With those in place, I'm now separating the next set of branches. I chose these 12 inch ribbons to add onto my tree and I'm starting off with the white sheer ribbon. Next is the red and green Christmas plaid, then the silver trim, and the red and white polka dot ribbon. I'm now adding on the silver ribbon, the red sheer ribbon, and I'm finishing up with that Merry Christmas Dollar Tree ribbon. Now that I'm done, I'm folding down the last small section of branches. I'm adding on my last 12 inch ribbons and I'm starting with the silver. I'm now adding on the red and green plaid and then the red and white polka dot ribbon. I'm now finally finishing adding my ribbons on with the white sheer and finishing up with the Christmas striped ribbon. It certainly looks really messy, but now I'm going to start bending out and down the branches on the tree. I started at the bottom and worked my way up to the top. Now there's not a whole bunch of them, and so I made sure that most of the branches were in the front, but I did pull some of them into the back. With my branches now in place, I'm neatening up the ribbons, I'm just kind of moving them around, opening up the wired ribbons and bending them and pulling them all in a downward pattern. If you find that some of the ribbons look a bit too long and out of place, just use your scissors and give them a little trim. For that one tall branch that's on the top, I just folded it over onto the back. To stand the tree up, you can use the base that came with it, but I'm going to make my own. I'm using one of the small terracotta flower pots from the Dollar Tree, and I'm painting it brown with the Dollar Tree acrylic paint. There's a little hole in the bottom, and I don't want the hot glue to sneak out. So I placed it down on a piece of white paper, and I traced around it. I then used my scissors to cut it out. I then placed it in the bottom of the flower pot and added some hot glue onto the top. And now I'm adding in some E6000. The hot glue will help hold it in place while the E6000 sets up. I'm now placing the bottom of the tree into my pot. To balance my tree, I'm using a handful of glass beads and you can pick these up at the Dollar Tree. And all I did was add them evenly around the inside of the pot. I'm adding a wooden star to the top of my tree. I picked this up at the Dollar Tree and it came in a pack with three different shapes. You can choose any color to paint it, but I decided to paint mine with some bright yellow acrylic paint. And I also made sure to paint both sides. Now that it's dry, I'm going to give it a bit of a vintage appearance by using a pencil. I'm rubbing my pencil on the outside edges of the star, and when I'm done, I'm using my finger and just kind of rubbing it in. It tones down the star, gives it a bit of dimension, and that rustic vintage appearance. To finish my Christmas tree, I'm adding some hot glue to the top and attaching the star. And my Christmas ribbon tree is complete.
Getting started, I'm using two of the oversized foam dice from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be painting them and to make it easier, I'm using two of the wooden skewers from the Dollar Tree and I'm pushing one into each side of the dice. With those in place, I'm now using my white acrylic paint and giving each two coats. After my two coats of paint dried, I then removed them from the skewers. I'm going to make sure that the two holes on the dice are facing each other. I'm attaching a two and a five to the dice for Christmas Day and I'm using the two and the five from this Dollar Tree poster number pack. I simply removed them and placed one on each block. With my numbers in place, I'm going to attach them together with some hot glue making sure that the sides with the two holes match up together. I want to break that bright white up just a bit, so I'm going to splatter the dice with my green and red acrylic paint. I'm starting with the red and I'm just placing a little bit on the end of my paintbrush and then using another paintbrush, I'm tapping it all around the two dice. I'm giving it a light coat and when I'm done tapping the top, the back and the sides, I'm tapping on the front with the 25. When the red was complete, I then moved on to the green and followed the same instructions. I'm adding on a ribbon accent and I'm using this pretty 5 8 of an inch holly ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I measured it around the dice blocks and then cut two pieces. I then used my glue gun to attach one around the front and one around the back. Adding on the red and green paint splatter along with these ribbon accents for this project, they're just personal preference and they're completely optional. Dollar Tree has an assortment of Christmas ornaments that you can use to decorate your 25 blocks. I picked out this red Christmas sleigh and I'm going to use this along with three of these little gifts from the Dollar Tree. I picked out the silver, the gold, and the red and I'm adding them into the back of the sleigh. I'm placing some hot glue in the bottom, then placing in the gold gift. I'm now hot gluing in the silver and then the red. To pull Santa's sleigh, I need a reindeer and I'm using one of these white ornament reindeers from the Dollar Tree. He's wearing a scarf, so to bring in a little color, I'm painting it with my green acrylic paint. With the scarf complete, I'm now using some of the brown Dollar Tree acrylic paint and I'm painting his antlers. With my reindeer and sleigh complete, I'm using some E6000 to attach them to the blocks. I placed a generous amount on the bottom of the sleigh runners and then placed it on top of the blocks. I then attached some to the bottom of the reindeer's hooves and placed his tail in between that little opening on the sleigh. What's Christmas without Santa? I'm adding one that I already had on hand he actually came from the Goodwill in a big bag of goodies. You can find similar ornaments like him at Michael's, Joann's, the Dollar Tree, and even Walmart. To add him, I'm placing a little dot of hot glue on his hand and then have him leaning against the blocks. I can't wait to place this in front of my Christmas tiered tray. To make my Christmas tiered tray birdhouse, I'm starting with one of the little wooden birdhouses from the Dollar Tree. I'm making a base for it and I'm using eight 
of the Dollar Tree's tumbling tower blocks. I'm attaching them using my glue gun and I'm placing four on the bottom and four on the top. Now that they're all attached together, I have a little base for my birdhouse. And to attach the two together, I'm placing some hot glue on the top of the base and then centering down the birdhouse. For this project, you can paint your birdhouse any color you'd like. I'm going to paint mine with some white acrylic paint. I'm adding a roof onto this craft, so I'm not going to paint it. I'm going to add some Christmas ornaments and a wreath onto the birdhouse. And if you follow me, you know how much I love to use those Mardi Gras beads. I'm getting started by cutting individual beads off the different colored necklaces. I'm first making my wreath and I'm using one piece of greenery from this Dollar Tree wired garland pack. I'm folding it in half and cutting it with my clippers. Because it's wired, it's easy to bend, so I'm making a small circle and then wrapping the ends over the garland. With my wreath made, I'm now going to check the size over the opening on the birdhouse. The fit is perfect, so I'm going to clean it up using my scissors. To add the beads onto my wreath, I'm just placing some dots of hot glue and then placing down a different colored bead. I've made a bunch of these for different projects. They're easy and they make really cute accents. To decorate the birdhouse, I'm placing a line of hot glue against the edge of the house and then just placing down some of the beads. As I was adding them, I didn't have a pattern. I just placed the colors on randomly. I worked my way around the front, the two sides, and the back. Before I add on the wreath, I'm going to make a roof for the birdhouse, and I absolutely love using these Dollar Tree wooden clothespins. I need 14 pieces, so I'm pulling apart seven of them. I've separated them into two sets of seven and I'm going to use my Starbond thick glue to attach them together. I love working with this glue because it sets natural wood up in just a couple of minutes. And if you'd like to try it, I do have the company linked below. To attach them together, I'm using my Starbond glue and lying them side by side. I'm also making sure that the flat ends line up evenly. Now that the glue has dried, I'm going to paint both sides using this pretty golden brown acrylic paint. While I'm painting, I'm making sure to get inside all those little nooks and crannies. Now that my roof is dry, I'm attaching it to the top of the birdhouse using my hot glue gun. I placed some hot glue on one side and then placed the top of the roof on the peak of the birdhouse. I then did the same for the other side. I'm painting the peak on the birdhouse the same golden brown paint to match the roof. To add on the wreath, I'm placing some hot glue on the back and then centering it over the opening on the birdhouse. I'm adding a little pine cone accent to the base of the birdhouse, and I found these at the Dollar Tree. I used my hot glue gun to attach them. I'm adding a star accent to the top of my birdhouse, and I'm using one of these wooden stars from the Dollar Tree, and I painted mine green. I used my hot glue gun to attach it. Every birdhouse needs a bird, and I'm using this little red one from a package that I found at Michael's. I used my hot glue gun and attached him to the corner of the star. And with that, my Christmas tiered tray birdhouse is complete.
Here we are at the end of the video and I hope you enjoyed making these four Christmas DIYs with me. Please be sure to check out the Christmas collab playlist. And if you're new to my channel and you're thinking, hey, I'd like to come back and hang out with her again, don't forget to click that little red subscribe button below. If you're looking for more Christmas DIY craft inspiration, I'll have some projects linked at the end of this video. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you soon. Bye everybody!